Prior to the official release of Last Epoch, they made a blog post that showed us some of the possible new unique items they were adding to the game with 1.0. Vial of Volatile Flasks was one such item, and upon seeing it, I asked myself, huh, what could I make with that? And I'm going to show you my cold flask apocalypse slash cold popcorn slash maybe just popcorn. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a name. I don't want to just call it something as simple as cold flask explosive trapper or something like that. That's boring. So let me know what you think it should be called in the comments below or whatever. Anyway, without further ado, this build has a few pros. A couple of cons, so let's just quickly cover those before I go into the details of what the build consists of. The pros. AoE. AoE for days. Uh, the way the mechanic works is you throw traps, which can subsequently throw more traps, and then those traps throw flasks. So you get this, like, bunny hop effect, so you clear the entire screen, despite the fact you might be only targeting one of the mobs. And then you run to the next area only to find that you've killed everything in that area as well. Uh, it feels really, really nice in arena because you just stand in the spot, but stand on the spot rather in a smoke bomb and everything around you is just getting murderated despite the fact that you're just haphazardly throwing your traps everywhere. It's quite tanky. There's a lot of synergy with how the traps trigger a glancing blow or give you a lot of glancing blow and dodge. It's very easy despite being on a rogue to get uh, max or capped out resistances and we're going with low life as well which I know is a bit meta and ordinarily I would probably avoid but to really get the potential out of this build or out of this item specifically I thought it was necessary and everyone knows low life is just kind of tanky anyway so you know I won't expand too much on that one of the cons I would say is it's very item dependent not necessarily with the uniques. You can get away with getting and reaching empowered monoliths without doing low life. Uh, obviously, once you get there and you want to push further corruption, I do recommend transitioning to low life as soon as possible. But it's more with to do with things like mana consumption. You, you're going to want a, a lot of uh, mana efficiency affixes on your gear. Aside from that, if you are into the like trapper style or even totems in either Blast Epoch or in uh, Path of Exile, you're going to be very familiar with this playstyle. It's very high mobility. You have lots of time to run around and avoiding attacks because everything is essentially auto-targeted. You throw down the traps and the traps just murder everything and target everything for you. With that in mind, if you're fighting, say, the, uh, the Emperor of Corpses or the Corpse Dragon, as I like to call him for short, he has a lot of additional minions so it's actually quite hard to single target him you'll be throwing your traps all at him and then the way the traps target with the flasks and other traps that they throw out it seems to just basically want to target the furthest thing away from wherever your traps land so you'll be throwing everything at the dragon and then it will be throwing the flasks at all the millions of zombies it's summoning so it can make fights where there's a lot of ads involved kind of take a wee while on the other hand if there's just one thing on the screen that thing is fucked <laughs> so you know it's it's a bit of a trade-off depending on what you're fighting but uh but yeah it's a very comfy build I, i've got to say it's, it's one that i just like once you've got the gear you can just chill and just destroy the planet but let, let's have a look at what it actually consists of shall we 
Okay, so as always, this is somewhat aspirational, although actually relatively achievable. At least I found it to be uh, somewhat relatively achievable on uh, Merchant's Guild. There's going to be some things that you're going to look at and be like, mm, can I get that? If you're playing COF, you might struggle a wee bit. I also probably wouldn't recommend this as a like cycle starter. You can certainly play it as one, but it's going to be a slow burn to get all of these items because like i said it's it's item dependent there's a lot of uniques as you, in fact if you're looking carefully you'll notice there's only one thing that isn't a unique here uh, everything else is unique items but i'll just go over them explain the reason for the choice uh potential alternatives maybe and then you can make your judgment from there so i'm going to start with smoke weaver you don't need smoke weaver in fact the vast majority of the time you're going to just want a really sexy exalted item However, if you do manage to find yourself in a position where you can buy at least a 2 LP or better smoke weaver or you find one, then get it. The reason for that is mostly because it gives you lots of dodge, which is always nice, but also because the reduced cooldown for shift. Shift is actually integral for this build, and I'll explain a wee bit more later, but you're not going to cry without it. Otherwise, you just want an item that has critical chance on it. Any kind of dagger with critical chance, it does have to be a dagger. And that's fine, because then that will scale really, really well. And you'll be able to get 100% crit really, really easily. Otherwise, you want mana regen, increased mana regen, regen, and increased cold damage. You could go with crit multi if you prefer, depending on how your flow state is and how you play the build. You'll understand a little bit more later when I go into like rotations and things like that. Otherwise, this is the ideal uh, weapon if you do manage to get a 2LP smoke weaver. Next, we have the Bone Clamor Bob Boot. I don't actually know how to pronounce that word. Do feel free to explain in the comments below. I, uh, bob Boot? Boot? I don't know. I've never worn a Bob Boot. Um, either way, I, I digress. Quite easy to get like a 3 LP. 4 LP is going to be ex astronomically expensive, but achievable once again with the Merchant's Guild. Anything that I've put as a T7, um, that's the, what you want to focus on. So as you can see here, increased damage for skills used by shadows and mana efficiency for synchronized strike, armor and the damage bonus taken from uh, critical strikes and health. The health will scale with low life to actually give you more ward. So I know it sounds crazy. Um, you will probably have like 100 HP at any point. But the more maximum HP you have, the more ward you will get through the li low life tech, which I'll explain momentarily. In terms of amulet, it's uh, it's pretty much a stat stick, to be honest. You want resistances. You want uh, physical resistance and a necrotic resistance. The reason you want necrotic is because you want to get as much resistance as possible. As you can see down here, we have 261 with this gear. And that's because it scales with one ward per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resistance. Now, some people who are newer to the game may question this, and, and even I question it because the spelling. It says uncapped, which you would think means anything less than 75, but every single forum post and everything I've seen implies that it actually means overcapped. So you want to stack all the necrotic resistances. Um, so yeah, that's why we've got the uh, the bone amulet. Lots of necrotic resistance on there. You want throwing damage for the flat damage, increased cold because everything will be cold damage that you're doing. You want poison resistance and you want health again to get your maximum health up because that will result in more ward down the line. Now let's have a look at this bad boy, the vial of volatile ice. This this is what makes the build. Now I'm going to say right now, I think. If you didn't use the Vial of Volatile Ice and you just went with like a poison or all fire damage version of this build, you will probably get a lot more damage out of it. I haven't tested it yet. I plan to once I've got it in the perfect spot where and I get to experience it firsthand. But I suspect you could just get rid of this Vial of Volatile Ice, go with dual wielding instead, which would alone give you loads more damage. And then you just basically synergize everything with fire, which again has potential to give you quite a bit more damage. However, one of the things that makes this build so comfy is because everything you do is cold damage, everything is getting chilled and or frozen. And chill is, a, 
inadvertently damage mitigation because if you freeze or chill things their attack speed is dramatically slowed the cast speed is dramatically slowed their movement speed etc so you're receiving less incoming damage so it's going to be a case of do you want to do lots of cold so you can feel safer or at the risk of having more damage come at you do you want to go with fire and get lots of more damage so that's something that I'll elaborate a little bit more on at the end of the uh, towards the end of the video otherwise getting a 4 LP vial of volatile ice is really easy there are so many of them on the merchant's guild at the moment I bought one for I think it was 200 gold uh, sorry 200,000 gold I tell a lie 200,000 gold and I managed to get a tier 7 cold and tier 7 ward per second um catalyst as well that I, I think ended up having poison resist and I ended up rolling elemental damage onto it and that that was 200,000 gold as well coincidentally some maniac put it up there so I bought it immediately quickly crafted the item uh, but the the four LP more than achievable almost every single one that you will see is uh, less than a million obviously it varies somewhat on the rolls the only rolls you actually care about though is the increased area of cold area skills and increased cold damage you don't really care about the freeze rate multiplier like it's nice but you don't care and this is going to be a crit build so we don't care about frostbite whatsoever it, it just does its thing in the background so increased area really nice increased cold damage really really nice then you've got exsanguinous so this is the item you're going to want to equip once you've migrated to low life the idea is the more health you've got you will lose all of that health and then that gets converted your missing health gets converted as ward and that will increase your ward even more eventually when you stack and synergize this with a bunch of other items so for example you got a bit of synergy here and on these boots that we'll look at again in a moment it, it just basically gives you thousands of thousands of ward permanently and the, the speed at which it recovers is so fast it it would be like having 100% life leech essentially it, it recovers really really well and it's what makes low life builds so strong um getting 2 LP is pretty pretty reasonable anything more than that is possible but if you look on the merchants guild it's extraordinarily expensive we're talking like 50 to 100 million gold because it's very meta right now so do bear that in mind uh it's a very similar situation with this belt you can get 4 LP it's extraordinarily expensive 3 LP is a lot more reasonable and if you were to get the uh, the 4 LP I do recommend getting the mana regen and cold damage uh, again the reduced bonus from critical strikes I think once you get it spread across uh, I think I have it on three items uh, you get about 90 percent and you know that's effectively making you crit immune at that point one thing I forgot to mention with exsanguinous and bone clamor bar boot still don't know how to pronounce it is um you want increased damage for skills by shadows and mana efficiency for synchronized strike like i said th those two are very very important because that's the main source of your damage and you're going to be casting a lot synchronized strike costs a lot of mana which you shall see shortly after that you want ring of the third eye the merchant's guild is flooded with 3 lp and 4 lp uh rings they're somewhat expensive there are a few million which is more than achievable uh, it's basically the next item i'll be buying after i got this um you've got this one here where i filled in all the stats you absolutely want the minus five throwing mana on both of them uh, everything you're doing is throwing attacks so you're throwing explosives which throw um the the flasks and it costs mana to throw the flasks from your traps more on that later um you want the critical chance the minus 30 crit multiplier is a bit uh but the 30 percent chance to gain ward is also like massive if you find that you don't need the additional ward you could just go with a regular ring so you don't lose the multiplier but you do want to make sure that you're at least hitting 100 percent crit for all your hits um on this one i've left two of them blank like i said it is very easy three lp uh third eye rings are going for zero gold at the moment there's literally about 20 zero gold i made a video on why that is asinine by the way i uh, posted it yesterday so if you want to find out why that's a bad idea and listing things for zero gold is a bad idea do, do go check that out but otherwise i've left two of the uh, legendary affixes empty because you can fill it with what your needs are as you're gearing up maybe you might need a little bit more crit like technically i'm still 
in need of fire or cold res, uh, according to this screen. So maybe you want to put that on there. It's entirely up to you. Fulfill your own needs. I'm not your boss. I'm not your dad. Do what you want. Then we've got Riverbend Grasp. Now, I actually had a long think about what gloves I actually wanted here. There were a couple of options, and I ended up settling on Riverbend Grasp. Again, 4LP is very achievable to get via the Merchant's Guild. Uh, you want to absolutely get current health lost per second and of missing health gained as ward. That synergizes with Exanguinous. Um, again, you want to get throwing damage because everything you're doing is throwing damage. Health, I've gone for hybrid health and elemental resistances because that's going to make you tankier. Health gives you more ward and so on and so forth. Some uh, other things that are kind of helpful, you've got the flat damage built into the gloves already. Increased dodge, which is nice. Again, more health. Uh, the increased throwing damage overall. The chance to throw an axe, you don't care about that. It's very meme -y. Sometimes it makes me chuckle when I'm throwing tra traps in one direction and then an axe just flies off into the distance only for it to hit another monster and attract it. It does bugger all damage. You really don't care about that bit. Then you want transient rest. Much like with the gloves, I had a long hard think. There are some boots. Uh, I think there's at least two pairs of boots that are synergistic with cold but they're both more in line with doing frostbite which is an alternative version of this build that you could do i am not 100 percent sure if it's going to be stronger if for you to focus on the dots in lieu of doing a crit build again that's something i'll talk about towards the end of the video a little bit more there, there is definitely potential there but with the crit build you would definitely want transient rest it gives you physical, poison, and necrotic damage. We want all the necrotic damage. It gives you a fair chunk of movement speed. And then when it comes to getting a 2 LP, again, it's very reasonable, very achievable. 3 LP is also doable, but it gets very expensive. 4 LP, I don't think at the time of recording this video, there were any on the Merchant's Guild. Uh, so for this one, again, you want the ward gain thing because the more ward you get, you're constantly spending mana. So you just getting lots of lots of ward, getting really, really tanky. You will be using shift a lot as well, so it gives you a fair chunk of ward at that. Uh, you want increased movement speed because movement speed is king in action RPGs. And again, you've got the armor and the reduced bonus damage taken from critical strikes. This paired with the uh, the other two sources that I've got it on the belt and helmet, it results in 90% not uh, less damage from critical strikes. You may, you're basically crit immune at that point, so it's really, really nice. This item... This item is cheap when it's not got LP on it and extraordinarily expensive when it has got LP on it. Depending on how good you are at the game and how great your mobility is and avoiding skills and whatnot, you could potentially get away with not using this and maybe have a really good, well-rolled, um, whatever the, the gambit rogue relic is called again it's probably around here somewhere <laughs> gambit of the erased rogue you could potentially use this one you're going to have shadows up all the time so you're going to get a lot of damage reduction it's only a one in six chance it's not scaling that with the amount of shadows but you could have up to five shadows on screen at once it's kind of nice plus one to the the skills isn't mandatory but it would help and it gives you a wee bit more crit as well so there there is room to play around with this item it's entirely based on how comfortable you are and how much ward you're gaining from all the other sources. Like, if you've got all of this, you could probably get away with throwing this one out. Uh, I haven't put any stats on it in terms of legendary potential. One, because it's incredibly expensive, but if you do get lucky enough to get one, two, three LP, maybe you win the lottery, you can share your winnings with me and get a four LP as well. In that case, put what you want on it. Again, fulfill your own needs. If you're lacking some res, whack some res on there. If you want more ward or more mana, do that too. It's entirely up to you. When it comes to the idols, the uh, the idols are pretty like standard for these. I've left these two blank again because, honestly, you don't want an Ateran one because the Ateran ones are just a pipe dream. You're not going to need the dodge, honestly. Everything else is kind of wank. Whereas with the Lagonia ones, You've got a bit of room to play around. Do you want more armor? I don't know. It's up to you. Do you want more mana? Sure. Don't bother with stun avoidance. It's shite. <laughs> Ward retention might be something you want. However, it's entirely up to you. Again, fulfill your own needs when it comes to that. 
For the rest of the uh, idols, however, they're, they're very standardized and very cheap, apart from these. Uh, I'll come back to those in a moment, though. For the large idol, you're going to want increased area for throwing area skills. That's a bit of a mouthful. Increased damage for skills used by shadows. Again, sh your shadow is going to be your main source of damage. Now, you may be asking, Brian, why not get the acid flask one? I shall explain. Increased area with acid flask is 7 to 20%. Increased area for throwing skills is 6 to 19%. For the sake of 1%, you will increase the area of both Explosive Trap and your Acid Flasks, as opposed to just your Acid Flasks. So don't bother with this one. It's stupid. It shouldn't exist. Go with this one. It affects the two skills. Otherwise, you're going to want the increased damage for skills used by Shadows, of course. Then for the huge idol, you want Mana Efficiency with Synchronized Strike, because... If you have no mana efficiency, I think the cost of Synchronized Strike ends up being like, I think it's like 70 mana. It's ungodly expensive. So you basically want to get that as cheap as possible. That's one of the main focuses. If you've got a bunch of idols in the Merchant's Guild or you, you find a bunch, try and prioritize the mana efficiency over the damage. And then once you find some that have got as much mana efficiency, you can start looking at... Uh, Increased damage for the shadows as well. Uh, it's the same for these two here. Then you've got these bad boys. These bad boys are expensive. I'm not going to lie to you. They are horrifically expensive. But they give you a lot of ward. So it's kind of worth... You could maybe supplement them a bit. Maybe just get critical strike and then health. If you still need to reach the, uh, the 100 critical strike chance and things like that. But eventually, your best in slot is going to be these two. And like I said, the two blanks, put what you want in there. It's entirely up to you. Then when it comes to the blessings, these are left blank because they're item ones. Do what you want. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe you want lots of relic shards for poops and giggles. That's entirely up to you. But when it comes to the actual defensive-based ones, it's a rogue. Rogues don't have a lot of sources for defense. So the best place to get them is from your blessings. So you've got your void resistance. You've got your necrotic resistance, which is really important in particular. You've got armor. You've got a bit of choice with this one, honestly. You might potentially want to go for frailty on hit. It's more damage mitigation. Endurance is useless because you're a, a low life build. Maybe you need fire resistance, depending on uh, what gear you've got at the time. And I believe you've got increased dodge rating as well, but you're going to get a lot of dodge from your... Uh, your dusk shroud so you don't really need it so with this one you've got a little bit of choice but uh otherwise you've also got the chance to uh shred cold resistance on this one and yeah lightning resistance and that's what's gonna make these nice and padded out for you okay so now let's look at the passives now this is one of those few builds that dips a little bit into everything you're, you're the everyman obviously the mastery will be blade dancer but you you can see there's a few points here there and everywhere Let's look at the base class first and foremost, though. So you want Swift Assassin, pretty self-explanatory. Throwing attack, speed, and physical damage. Makes sense. Steady Hand, lots of dex and health. More health means more ward. You've got Dodge and Parry. You're doing this for the dodge rating. Technically, you are also doing it for the Glancing Blow. If you are feeling a little bit cheeky, and if you're really good at just avoiding things, you could possibly not put the five points in here, because you will have... Anything from like 10 to 60 Dusk Shrouds, depending on what's on screen and what's happening. So you're going to have very more than likely 100% Glancing Blow at the times where it's important. I personally would keep it spec'd, however, because there's going to be those moments when you first load into an Echo or first approach a boss and you haven't gained those stacks yet. And maybe they get a cheeky shot off at you. And if you're really unlucky... He just one-shots you. So you, you've got to be careful with those, those types of things. You may not have had a chance to build up your ward yet, etc. So it's, it, it's entirely dependent on you, but you could potentially spec out of it and whack it somewhere else, like maybe armor shred and things like that. Uh, otherwise, you want the uh, critical precision for the increased critical strike chance per dagger. You're only using the one dagger, but that 64% is what basically carries you over the line with uh, get, reaching the 100% crit chance. Next, I'm going to cover the others because there's very little to talk about on those. Uh, focus Fire, more decks, it scales with everything, and Dodge Rating Debuff on bosses. It's just nice to ensure that you uh, are hitting them as frequently as possible. 
For Falconer, you want health and dodge rating from Wilderness Scout. And I've whacked a few points in here for the stamina of the rover. Increased dodge rating is always nice. Increased mana regen is also quite lovely. You've got two points in Agile Hunt. That is because you needed it to get to uh, stamina. So that's, that's the only reason. Then you've got Blade Dancer. Now, this is probably the freakiest looking Blade Dancer mastery you have seen in your life. I don't think you're ever going to see something so weird and bottom and top heavy and just an empty vacuum in the middle. But I will explain. So, Cloak of the Shadows, Dex and Glancing Blow. You want the Glancing Blow for the same reason you wanted it before. Plus, you're going to need to put some points in here to get further to the end. So, deal with it. Then you've got Shroud of Dusk. Pretty much the same reason. Uh, more health to go towards your ward. And a chance to get even more Dusk Shrouds. It's not massively helpful, that part. It's mostly for the health. And again, it's to push the bar along. Uh, once is for the throwing physical damage and uh, dodge rating of hit recently. Pursuit is for the throwing attack damage. And of course, the movement speed is quite tasty. Movement speed is king. Skia synthesis. Skia synthesis. I'm not entirely sure of the pronunciation. This I am in a love hate relationship with. You're specking into this one because the increased shadow damage. But depending on how many of the low life items or low life meta items you have, it can be a wee bit sketchy because when you create the shadows, particularly when you're spamming and using synchronized strike, you're healing and the more health you've got, the less ward generation you have. So it can be a little bit nauseating, but at the same time, you've given yourself a whole chunk of health. So if you do suddenly run out of ward, you, you, you're kind of okay. Like... Basically, I don't know how I feel about this one. I'll leave that up to you. If you want the points in there, put the points in there. If you think you can deal without the extra damage, do feel free to allocate them elsewhere. But that's where I've put them for now. Otherwise, you want critical eye because it applies critical vulnerability chance. You're going to have 100% critical chance uh, at this point anyway, or you should do. This is more for bosses, so they don't have like critical avoidance and things like that. Uh, then you've got all in. Like I said, you should have 100% crit. You do not care about hits that don't crit because everything should be critting and you don't care about the dot damage. So you just want all the crit multi. This is very, very, very important. This will be useless until you become low life. But as soon as you become low life, you become a tanky god and you get all the crit. You're probably going to at some point during leveling have put a lot more crit on your items. At the moment, in fact, I'm actually using a dagger with tier 7 crit chance on it. And now, as soon as I transitioned to low life, I have well over, like, I think I, I hit like 160 critical chance. You don't need 160 critical chance. So do bear that in mind. But th this node in particular is for when you're low life. Uh, otherwise, you've got Shadow Master. I'm sure you've probably ascertained why. Increased shadow damage and increased shadow. So you can have five shadows at once. That's it for the passive. Now we're going to look at the real tech, the, the uh, chef's kiss, as it were. So first of all, let's have a gander's at Acid Flask. So this is when you're uh, leveling, you're going to be throwing Acid Flask for the most part. I strongly recommend you get alchemical proficiency as soon as possible. You want corrosive for the damage multiplier, of course. Splash zone, because getting as much area on this build as you possibly can really makes it feel a lot smoother you'll get to a point where you'll you'll notice the difference of how much or rather you'll notice how much difference the area makes just by how quickly things die though you'll have a lot of overlap basically from multiple sources uh, you've got one in here but that's purely so you can get to the alchemical proficiency you then want to pack uh, one into explosive flask it does change it from physical to fire that doesn't matter because the flask overrides it and turns it to cold. All you want is that 100% hit damage. You then want to whack one in here for the throwing fire damage. Again, the flask, the volatile ice item converts it to cold. So you're all good. And then you've got piercing debris, increased crit chance, 200% and critical strike multiplier, 200%. Then you want shift. Shift is always helpful. It's great for the leveling process. And of course, it will be integral for this build and you're about to find out why so mana efficiency and cooldown recovery always a good play you want to uh, go into that then you're going to want to go down to momentum to get two points into there 
You get the haste buff. It's very good for leveling. It's good for movement speed when you're clearing through echoes. Then you want swift recovery. Shift restores mana on use. This amount is tripled when below half health. Guess what? what point this becomes really strong. When you migrate to the low life build, you will be spamming this like crazy, pretty much to cancel out the synchronized strike cost because it gets so expensive. As soon as you get into low life, this will really come in into its own. You will use it to spam all the time. If you have the smoke weaver as well, you'll be constantly, you'll probably even be able to keep yourself at capped mana, essentially, with, uh, with swift recovery. Shadow slip, invulnerability while shifting is huge. And then you get additional dodge rating for one second with elusive after the uh, the shift. Great for defense. Uh, it literally does shoot up your your uh, your dodge rating to pretty much a hundred for that uh, that second uh, afterwards. After that, you want to get lasting presence. It leaves a shadow. Again, this is more for when you're in echoes. Just you do a shift. It leaves a shadow behind. You drop a trap or explosive trap, and likewise the shadow will through through the traps as well. Deadly Ambush and Brascula's Hesitation. That is so the shadow throws the traps and it just gets multiplicity of damage added on top of it. It's really tasty. Now the Explosive Trap. This is where it gets expensive. Like you'll be throwing your flasks as you're leveling, directly throwing them yourself and it'll be fine. Then you start throwing the Explosive Traps and that's when it gets a little bit meaty. But it becomes very, very manageable once you get the rings with the minus mana costs, the throwing skills and things like that. So first, you want to head over to here. During the leveling process, at least, you want to get your, your maximum traps up to two. You want to get Trap Sprinkler. Now, I've only put two points in here because it gives you 20% chance. And then you whack one point in here that gives you 70. So technically, that's 90%. There's another node we're going to talk about shortly that I'm going to suggest you make a decision on yourself which might free up a point to whack in here. I don't think you need the 100%. I think 90 is more than enough. But you've, if you do feel like you're going to get more damage out of it, feel free to whack one in just for that 10% extra chance. But I don't think you need it. Then you've got Trap You Share. So what happens is you throw a bunch of traps, those traps throw more traps, and then those traps throw acid flasks. Now, Acid Flask mana consumption uh, is increased by 70%. So that's why you need the, the rings, basically, with the tier 7 minus 5 mana cost for throwing traps. Now, I'm going to point something out that may blow your mind a wee bit. This only applies to the traps you throw. Any traps thrown by your shadows and any flasks thrown from your shadows' traps cost you nothing you are only ever spending mana on the traps and flasks that are thrown from you which is fucking beautiful <laughs> because you have five shadows throwing three traps each at this point because they are inheriting all of this as well and it works out beautifully so this is like the main tech uh, you also want the clustered explosives, additional traps throw. So that's what allows you to throw tra three traps at once. Again, it costs more mana, but only for you. And that allows your shadows to throw three traps as well. Obviously, it's still expensive, even though it's only you throwing it. You do want to get subtle, subtle pfft, words, subtle sabotage. Now you do like sacrifice a wee bit of damage. Maybe th there is an option to basically stack mana on some of those free uh, affix slots in the, uh, the the build planner. So maybe you could get away with not doing that and losing the error and the damage. Personally, it's the way I've gone. The minus 40% is huge. Uh, you've got the mana efficiency node. I've only put two in here for now. Again, there's a node that you might decide you don't want. And in that case, you could put some extra points in here. You don't really need the extra th throwing attack speed. And honestly, depending on the gear, if you, especially if you've got the, the, the smoke weaver, your, your shift gives you enough mana to make up for the one or two minus mana that this would provide you. You've got smoke traps. Explosive trap hits have a chance to grant you a stack of dusk shroud. Now, as I mentioned before, you could reach up to 60. That's, that's the highest I've reached so far, and that's without best in slot gear. And you can scale that. So explosive trap deals additional throwing damage per stack of dusk shroud. 
So usually you're hovering at around about 15 to 20, depending on how fast you're moving through echoes. Against bosses, it's usually around about 20. If there's a lot of stuff on screen though, like it's a really densely packed area, maybe it's a, an echo with lots of bugs or smaller units that tend to come in higher density, then yeah, you, you end up hitting the 60 uh, mark and you just have all the defense and all the damage. You also want Tinkerer's Design. This is actually quite an important one. Uh, this is another node that you may decide to prioritize. Um, it's kind of necessary because the trigger area, the detonation area is huge, um, figuratively speaking. Um, but the trigger area really, really smooths out the build because it's quite small. So you end up throwing a bunch of traps and it throws them, depending on how far the throwing distance is, they, they spread out more. I do recommend that you get in into the fight and throw them at your feet, essentially, to make sure they're not as spread apart. But even then, you may find that, depending on the size of the mob, they'll walk past some of them without triggering them because they're just out of the uh, the area of effect. So getting the trigger area a bit wider just makes them trigger so, more, so much more consistently. And then the actual detonation area far exceeds the trigger area anyway. So definitely recommend some points in there. You also want cold snap mines. This is what converts the, the mines themselves to cold damage and also applies some cold shred, which is really, really tasty. This is the node that honestly I'm not sure about. It's prepared demolition. With this node, you get some additional damage for how long the trap has been left on the floor. So as I mentioned, sometimes you're going to have some that don't get triggered and then something might trigger it later. And you get some additional air and additional damage with this. Honestly, I'm not sure if I like it. I'll leave it up to you. You could spec out of these and like I said, put them into here. I would probably put them into here. In fact, I'm quite tempted to do that myself. You might want a wee bit more mana efficiency. Again, it depends on your gear. You might want to whack the extra point into Trap Sprinkler. It's entirely up to you. Personally, I'm more in favor of Tinkerer's design. But again, it depends on your play style. Maybe you like kiting the mobs. So you're running, you drop them at your feet, you keep them running, and then obviously the mobs are running up behind you, which is a tactic I often do when doing echoes. So th that's one of the reasons I put it in there. It, it is somewhat helpful. And if you're in an arena fighting a boss and the boss likes to move around, sometimes he ends up teleporting onto the traps and they, they, you then take the more damage. Then it's, 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 it's personal preference when it comes to that one. Smoke Bomb is very, very strong. In, uh, in this build, I think. Like, it's, it's strong in most builds, but in this one, it, 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 again, smooths it out. It makes it feel a lot more consistent and a lot nicer to play. Uh, so you want Lingering Fumes, because the longer you have Lingering Fumes, the longer you will have Shadows spawning. So later, I'm going to show you, like, the rotations, and you'll see how having a really long Smoke Bomb is integral to just smoothing things out. But yeah, so you want Duration. You want uh, smoke blades because it's going to give you more damage because you're going to be sitting in the smoke bomb quite a lot, especially in boss fights. And then you want to spawn shadows every second whilst you're in the smoke cloud. Generosity is very, very nice. It spreads it out. Again, if you're in a boss arena, you'll cut like maybe you're fighting Oribis. It pretty much covers the entire arena at that point. Uh, frailty on the initial explosion is always nice. It's some more damage mitigation. And then I've gone for Moonlight Bomb because Silver Shroud is OP. And once you consume it, you're getting a whole chunk of additional ward on top of that. So it's it's really, really, really nice. Um, then you've got Synchronized Strike. Synchronized Strike is a means to an end. You do not care about the damage of Synchronized Strike whatsoever. The reason you want Synchronized Strike is for this node here, for shadowing. Shadows created within four seconds of using Synchronized Strike deal increased damage, which I'm, as far as I'm aware, also applies to things they throw. We've also got Dark Allies. Synchronized Strike creates two additional shadows but costs significantly more mana. This can exceed your normal maximum number of shadows. So you can get five shadows at once with this. So you do a Synchronized Strike, you do a Shift, which also will apply these nodes, of course, as well. And then you throw your trap. So you're getting quite a chunk of extra damage out of it. You want mana efficiency, of course, of course, because otherwise it costs an obscene amount. The base cost without any mana efficiency, without specking anything, is 40. When you spec all the nodes that give you lots of damage, the Dark Allies and etc., like I said, it gets like 65, 70. So mana efficiency, very, very important. 
Then you've got some coordinated cuts. Uh, armor shred isn't a huge thing. Honestly, there's nothing else on the tree that's worth going into. This was more of a, oh, it's the best I'm going to be able to make out of it. Um, so yeah, coordinated cuts. You get some armor shred. It does help a little bit. Don't get me wrong. And there's also another source of critical vulnerability chance as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's the that's the passives and the skills for you. I hope that made sense. I think it works really beautifully. Now I'm going to show you the rotation. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you the various possible rotations you're going to want to get into the habit of using when playing this build, just for like optimal damage, I suppose. So whilst you're just moving around echoes, you're going to be in a habit of just dashing with shift and then throwing. The shadow, of course, is going to throw traps with you. The shadow's damage is going to be extraordinarily higher compared to yours. And the vast majority of the time, you're going to be killing trash. Also, just throwing out traps every now and then, again, clears the vast majority of the trash. Occasionally, you may come across something that's particularly tanky, like a really beefy rare. In those instances, you can just drop the smoke bomb, which will give you flat damage, and of course will be producing shadows, which likewise throw your traps for you. It will have an amazing clear. It's great for when you are in arenas, because you just cover everything. The entire screen has flasks going all over the place. There's quite a bit of range on it, and uh, you do a healthy amount of damage. For boss fights, particularly if you're just doing like Oribis or... Um, bosses at the end of timelines, things like that. Rotation goes as follows. So you want to pop your smoke for the flat damage and defense and whatnot. You then want to do the synchronized strike, which will apply a crit vulnerability. And then once you've got those two together, you want to do your shift to recover the mana. And then, of course, you just want to throw all of the traps. What I recommend doing is sometimes... The spread of the traps is a bit wide. So once you've done the, the wombo combo, as it were, just move in, throw a couple more, and it will make them expire sooner. Because when they expire, that actually triggers the uh, the trap to both explode and also throw the flasks. Um, you may be asking, surely it's just better to do that in the first place. Just keep a constant flow of uh, throws, as it were. Flow of throws of the flasks and explosive traps going out. It's not that great, unfortunately. I did compare it. I basically did an Oribis fight just throwing the traps continuously at him. It's reasonable damage. Sometimes it works out really well and it's all you need. But overall, you do have better damage output when you're using the shadows to apply the damage because of all the modifiers you have on your tree and whatnot. So that's the build in a nutshell, or at least the cold version of the build. So there are potential alternatives, maybe some possibility. You might want to go with the dot side of things with the vial of volatile flasks. Maybe you want to go with frostbite and freeze multiplier and scaling off that. I haven't tested it myself. I have a feeling it might not be as strong. You may also want to scale lots of throwing damage in lieu of using shadows again there's some possibility there especially if you're going with uh, dots builds or like a fire you could convert everything to fire instead of converting it to cold i mentioned earlier in the build that would then free up your offhand for another weapon which you can scale a lot of damage on as well you also then get some nodes in the blade dancer tree that give you a lot of damage because you're dual wielding and things like that I do think fire is probably going to be the the way to go for maximum damage. But chill is just... It's comfy, man, which is ironic. Usually you want to be a bit toasty but, uh, <laughs> to feel comfy. But chill, it's, it's so powerful in any build. Chill just gives you free mitigation. So having the cold flask, it, it's probably the safer bet. But if you're quite confident in your ability to stay alive then probably going with fire throwing in some ignite in there is uh is probably the way to go especially with the nodes that you can get on the acid flask tree if you do experiment if you do try going for lots of throwing attack speed instead of shadows or if you do try fire or even poison just specking all into poison let me know how it goes tweet at me i'm uh, at brian the pirate on twitter 
uh, as well as Instagram and other socials, to be fair. Or just leave a comment, come back to the video and say, hey, Brian, I tried this because I'm, I'm a theory crafter. I'm a build crafter. That's what I enjoy about these games. So I would love to hear how that goes. If you do feel inspired by this video. If you didn't know already, by the way, I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Brian the Pirate. You can jump in. I'll be playing this build for the next couple of days still before moving on to... I was going to move on to like the, the Cinder Strike falconry gloves. I've heard they're bugged though, or it's believed at least that they're bugged. Maybe it's working as intended. Apparently they don't scale beyond level 20 on falconry. Uh, my plan was to scale all the falconry because it's, it's quite easy to get 30 skill points on falconry if you... If you get the right items, uh, maybe converting it to cold, uh, sorry, not cold, poison damage with the uh, the shield that you can get, the ruby shield, whatever it's called, things like that. Or at least doing fire and poison damage and just getting lots of air of effect. But we'll see, we'll see. If that's not the case, I'm thinking maybe Sentinel. Otherwise, there's a, a couple of build ideas I've got there. If that sounds good to you, you should probably subscribe. I cover Last Epoch, Path of Exile, Diablo for i do like diablo 4 it just makes me sad at the same time i do build videos i do general discussion videos i do a podcast with friends if that all sounds great to you also like the, the video it helps with the algorithm gods otherwise i'd like to thank you all for watching farewell i'll remember you